I call um, Kevin Hay. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Uh, I'm a little surprised to be speaking on this, on this bill this afternoon, having already uh, given my season's greetings to, to the House and the Speaker's team. Um, I, and can I maybe begin by reiterating yeah. my earlier, <laughs> earlier good chair? Um, I'm here now. Um, I, I, guess it, I, guess, I, guess it <laughs> I guess it reflects, Mr Speaker, um, that, that this is a bill that's, that's moving uh, rapidly through, it, through its process. Um, and uh, that's a, a, a surprise in some ways because uh, National did, uh, uh, did announce its, its uh, home start policy prior to the election, so one would have thought that such a rushed process would not be necessary. Um, but unfortunately, uh, that, that kind of poor pr process has become a bit of a hallmark of some of, of the government's legislation. I notice in particular the lack of consultation that has occurred to date on what's referred to euphemistically by the Bill's title as remedial matters, um, which uh, effectively, of course, amount to a cut to uh, veterans', um, veterans pensions. Um, uh, so, so at this point, the external consultation on, on that part of, of the Bill is non-existent. Um, as a result, Mr Speaker, we're very cautious about our approach to, to this bill. We um, are prepared to uh, support it to select committee and we're very interested to hear uh, what submitters, I'm thinking particularly of um, the RSA, for example, are going to have, have to say about the bill and, and uh, some of the, the social housing providers, tenants organisations and, and so forth, um, as well as as well as other stakeholders in the housing sector. I'm going to um, primarily in this, in this contribution talk about, um, about the, some of the housing aspects um, because we, we think that while, it's, while the, the, the net effect is extremely small, um, the, the, the $1,000 uh, contribution will be um, a helpful contribution to at least some people. Uh, I was very interested to hear Grant Robertson's analysis of uh, Dr Smith's um, uh, statistics in relation to the number of people that were expected to be assisted. I uh, tend to think uh, Mr Robertson is probably closer to the mark. Um, so, so, so to begin with, the critical thing to say is that, is that the measure in relation to KiwiSaver in this bill uh, essentially facilitates part of the government's home start package. And like a number of, of other measures that the government or the, the National Party announced in the, in the weeks immediately prior to the general election, Mr Speaker, uh, this was a package that appeared to have been developed without a lot of consultation, not only with external stakeholders, but also with government agencies. And indeed, Mr Speaker, uh, the response of commentators in the housing sector to the Home Start package was at best underwhelming. And it had all of the appearance of policy that was made up pretty much on the hoof. So it was a, it was, it was a package that was essentially a, um, a, a political measure uh, uh, aimed at, at solving a political problem rather than dealing in any real way with the housing crisis. So actually, we believe that on balance, the Home Start package will make the crisis worse rather than making it better. Um, so it was designed to, and arguably did, give National some cover-up in the run-up to the election, but actually does not deal with the fundamental issues of affordability um, and, and housing supply. So, in fact, the consensus of commentators, I think it's fair to say, was that Homestart will actually uh, fuel demand, uh, pushing up prices across the board and driving housing, and ha housing inflation in an already overheated market. So that's the kind of reverse of what we actually need to be, uh, to be occurring uh, in the housing sector. So it's, um, as other speakers have mentioned, it's, it's a demand-side response to what is uh, 
very largely a supply side problem. Um, so actually fueling demand is never going to deal with uh, uh, insufficient supply. I guess Mr. Uh, Dr. Smith argues that, that it, it's going to down, down the line stimulate uh, the, um, the, the, the private sector to, to build more houses. Uh, I think that's, that's a very long bow indeed to draw. So Treasury itself, in, in its advice, and we've, we've heard a little bit from, um, from Labor speakers already about some of Treasury's analysis, Treasury's, um, Treasury's own words were experience with homeowner grants in Australia, a very similar kind of policy, suggest that such programs tend to push prices up in a supply-constrained environment by supporting greater demand rather than improving affordability. Um, and so, Mr Speaker, we should not be holding out any hope that this policy is going to result in, in any kind of solution to the problem, although the specific measure in this bill might be of some, some assistance to a small number of, of, of Kiwis. But I stress a, a small amount of assistance. You know, so in the years since uh, National um, came to government in 2008, the, the average house price in Auckland has increased by $200,000. Increased by $200,000. So um, a, a, a nudge in the direction of some assistance of $1,000 might be conceivably just that little bit extra, that marginal um, improvement that a very small number uh, might need to make the necessary difference. But for the vast bulk of people, will actually go nowhere towards, towards uh, uh, meeting that affordability gulf. Um, so, so, Mr. Speaker, what we what we propose instead is that uh, is that um, policy should instead focus on the real drivers of, of the problems that we're facing. So, focus on um, the untaxed uh, income from capital gains that's fueling speculation and fueling. Um, fueling land prices and, and indeed the costs of, of, uh, of housing, particularly in Auckland, sir. Um, how about dealing with the essentially unfettered offshore speculation in, in the residential property market, again, particularly in Auckland, again, one of the fundamental drivers that's essentially untouched, although we do hear today that actually, after thinking about it for a bit, um, the government might finally be interested in, uh, in looking at some solutions in that area too. Um, but, Mr Speaker, the, the other, the other criti critical area that's, that's really untouched by government policy is the, um, is the, uh, the fact that land values, um, the, uh, the cost of building um, are driving are driving house prices both, both to buy but also to rent and that fall well outside of, of, uh, of the budgets of an increasing number of people. And so, Mr Speaker, what that suggests is that the problem of growing income inequality that we have in New Zealand sits actually at the heart of some of our issues along with those other drivers that I've mentioned. And Mr Speaker, if we're seriously interested in, de in dealing with the housing crises that we face, well, those are the issues that we've got to address. So we have some, some solutions that, uh, that, that would make some uh, genuine progress. We, uh, we advance our solution and, and stick by it of a capital gains tax, uh, excluding the family home. Um, we... Uh, we uh, we will increase the supply of affordable houses by undertaking a program of state building along with assisting local government and other social housing providers to increase supply. Uh, we suggest that National would be smarter, in fact, to, to be building hundreds of houses rather than selling them off. Um, and, Mr Speaker, we uh, also support rent-to-own schemes, both in the state's, state part of the housing sector but also facilitated in other parts of the housing sector. We need stakeholders to get together, Mr Speaker, to develop solutions rather than the sort of sticking plaster approach that we see from National time and again. So we support the Select Committee. No commitment after that, sir.